Did you know that in most countries around the world, the majority of the population are either overweight or obese? And many of these folks are trying or have tried to lose weight. If you are or ever have considered dieting, today's episode of Ask Dr. Walt is just for you. Today, our health includes our mind, our body, and our spirit. Separating medical facts from fiction is the key that leads to wise decisions about our health and well-being. Unpacking the latest research is vital. Doing what works helps us live our best lives today. How can we live longer? How can we live healthier? Let's ask Dr. Walt on Liftable TV. Hi everyone, I'm family physician Dr. Walt Laramore and I'm delighted that you're taking the time today to join me in my home office as we continue our discussion about some of the essentials of becoming highly health. And joining me today is a dear friend, Pam Smith, RDN. She's an internationally known nutritionist and energy coach, a radio host, an industry culinary consultant, a best-selling author, and creator of the Smart Way strategy. And through that strategy, thousands of people have won back their health and their energy. Pam Smith, welcome to Ask Dr. Walt. Oh, Dr. Walt, it is so great to be with you. And as you said, dear friend, for a very long time. Well, you know, Barb and I first met you. We moved to Kissimmee and a little country doctor down there. And the Laramores were a little bit, well, actually, that's a lie. We were a lot overweight. And we decided we wanted to learn a little more about nutrition because doctors don't know that much about it. At least I didn't. And through church, Barb had heard about your book, Food for Life, and the devotional that went with it. And that must have come out, gosh, in the late 80s, 90s, something like that. Yeah, early 90s. It was really all about, really, the very topic we're talking about today, how to just throw dieting out the window and instead focus on a way of life that indeed would give life, a way of life that could empower and nourish us, spirit, soul, and body. And that's what Food for Life was all about. Well, I, you know, I, I've always been about health being physical, emotional, relational, and spiritual. And I love how you use all of those same wheels of health. And uh -huh. Pam, I think it was you. We, it was about a year after Barb and I, year or two after we read your book, you and I started working at America's Health Network. You hosted right. the show, Ask the Dietitian. I was Ask the Family Doctor. That converted to the Fox Health Network. And I think we worked together, what, about five years there in Universal Studios in Orlando. Yeah, a full on five. I mean, I went on and did high on health. I, we just had so much fun. And one of the most fun things was when I was able to come on your show as a guest and you were able to come on my show because the reality is you can't separate nutrition, dietetics from basic overall health and well-being. So we had kind of that perfect synergy of how to help people get well, and live well. Uh, real quick side, back then you were an RD, registered dietitian. Mm -hmm. Now you're an RDN. And many people don't know about that transition. So real, real quick bunny trail on the change of letters. So really no difference in me, but difference in qualifications and credentialing. So the state of Florida, because my license sits under the Department of Medicine, changed the credentialing and it is now a registered dietitian nutritionist. And I want to emphasize that to people because there are myriad folks who are selling themselves as nutritionists who have little or no training. And when you're talking about folks like you, the training you've had involves the medical, the nutrition all together. And that's why when I refer patients to get nutritional help, it's not just to a nutritionist, but it's to a trained license. So well, anyway, yeah. here we are in January People are making resolutions, these New Year's resolutions. There's probably people already breaking them. How many people actually resolve to diet when it comes to the New Year? <laughs> Such a great question. The reality is people do still make resolutions. And no surprise, 
lose weight, stop smoking are still the top two. Number three is start exercising. Um, lose weight, stop smoking, start exercising. People do it. And about 87% of Americans make some kind of commitment to living a better lifestyle. But the real story to be told is how many people stick with that resolution stick with that commitment. Do you want to hear that stat? You bet, because it's going to <laughs> shock people, I think. It is. The typical New Year's resolution, at least in 2001, so here we are right, right at the very start of 2022, but in 2021, the um, percentage of people that made resolutions, the average amount of time they stuck with it was five days five miserable days and miserable they were which is why people go on a diet to go off a diet they're good to be bad they're legal to cheat because they end up being stuck in this prison it's why i call the word diet and you've heard me say this before <laughs> dr walt the original four letter word it's d-i-e-t one letter away from the word die. And that's what people feel like when they're on a diet, like they're going to die. So thereby, it doesn't last long. So resolutions don't last long. Diets don't last long. And one of the things that you taught me early on was, let's don't talk about diets. They fail. Maybe there's a little bit of short-term type stuff. But it really is about finding a way that you can improve your and your family's nutrition, which will improve your and your family's health in every way. In fact, you write that dieting is not always about weight loss. So unpack that for us a little bit. Yeah, again, I think when we think diet, we tend to think about losing weight and losing it as quickly as possible. So again, those ads that say lose 10 pounds in 10 days, 30 pounds in 30 days, they're very compelling. They're very um, alluring. But the reality is it, it isn't the road to success. We think weight loss, but really diet is simply how we're feeding our body. Diet is all about choices of the foods that we're consuming or not consuming. It's about not just what we're eating, but when we're eating, timing. It's about the balance of how we're consuming. And it's more than the input. It's also the output. And that's how much are we moving? So, I mean, the, the news that no one wants to hear that's not so alluring is that the answer is always about eating well and getting your body moving. That's the road to health. That's the road we need to be on, the path that's going to get us not just losing those pounds, but more importantly, keeping those pounds off. Because what you're talking about is part of God's divine design for each of us. We've mm -hmm. done programs in the past about moving, and I like that word better than exercising. And, mm -hmm. and I'm telling my patients now, it's movement. And it could be movement through a day. It's not 30 minutes at any one time. It can be parking a little farther out in the parking lot. It can be taking a walking break or having a walking meeting. It can be gardening. It, but it's just movement, getting off right. your butt and moving. But when it yeah. comes to the nutrition part, what are the challenges that most of your clients have when it comes to losing weight? Well, it's interesting. It's also the challenge that people have when they try to go onto a diet mm -hmm. is they tend to think, Dr. Wald, about all the things to cut out. I need to cut out chocolate. I need to cut out sodas. I need to cut out donuts. I need to cut out coffee. I need to cut out. It's, it's all about what to stop eating rather than developing a plan for what to eat. And that's where the sure failure comes into play because if you put your eyes onto all the things that are bad, what do you do? You hit those things, right? We know that's human condition. We, we tend to gravitate to whatever our eyes are on. But if instead we put our focus into how to feed the body, what are the needs of the body and give the body the supply to meet those demands, 
all of a sudden you're not talking about a diet, you're talking about a way of life. And it's a way of life that enables you to lose body fat while you're building body muscle. Important because most diets aren't about fat, muscle, it's all about losing water so that you can get good results and quick results on the scale. And then a lot of diets are so in balance that although you're losing weight quickly, you're losing muscle, not fat. But guess what? When that weight comes back on, and it most oftentimes does, what comes back on is the water and fat. Mm -hmm. So over a period of time, people become fatter. It's what I used to call the Oprah Winfrey story. We watched her painful challenges with weight, weight loss, weight gain, weight loss, weight gain. But every time she was changing her very body composition because she was losing muscle in the very radical and imbalanced way of dieting, but then gaining back fat over the period of time. And, you know, it's not just about being overweight because some people can carry extra weight. You remember I was the nutritionist for the Orlando Magic and Shaquille O'Neal for, for years and years. Well, again, Shaq was a big boy at the time he was playing for the Magic, seven feet, one inches tall, 331 pounds, but only 8.3% mm -hmm. body mm -hmm. fat. On the scale, it may have seemed that he was overweight. Oh, but he was a lean, mean basketball playing machine because he had muscle rather than fat. People that do chronic dieting, the yo-yo syndrome we've talked about and heard about, tend to become through the years over fat, which is why the shape changes. Why does it go to the middle and midlife is one of the questions, because you may weigh the same thing you weighed when you graduated from high school, but it may not look the same. Yeah. So people often ask me, and I know they ask you, what's the best diet plan? And you like to throw that question out and say, let's start at a different level with a different question. So for the average person, the average family that you deal with as a client, of course, you deal with industries and restaurants, and et cetera. But with the average client, what are some of the first things, the foundational teachings that you like them to have and the first steps that you like them to take? Well, in a big way, it's really embracing the fact that God created food to nourish our body. Food is not the enemy. Food is not public enemy number one. So if, if you've been trained through life to avoid food, starve the body, thinking that it's the road to health, that's the first mindset to attack. Nutrition comes through food. It's it's how our body was created. So- Wait, Hey Pam, so, sort of like when St. Peter had the vision from heaven, with the tablecloth coming down and all yes. foods were on it. Is that what you're all saying? Foods, exactly. All foods were on it. When Jesus did the miracle and fed the masses, it was loaves and fishes. He was not cutting out carbohydrate, nor was he avoiding um, any kind of sea animal protein. It was it was a balance. And that's, that's all foods. Now, again, you could take that definition of food a little bit further and say, are some of the foods that we fall head first in um, to very overly processed, mm -hmm. um, refined foods? Again, when I talk about the wonders and the glory of whole food carbohydrates, I'm not talking about Twinkies and donuts, right? Mm -hmm. So again, it's, it's being able to understand that difference between all foods being given to us to enable us to be nourished, but also recognizing there's a difference in, again, whole foods, foods created for us rather than manufactured in a laboratory. And there is a, a very big difference. So is, is it fair to say there are good foods and there are foods that aren't wise. And in the unwise, we might include the process, the ultra process, uh, those that aren't plant-based, for example, those that that have been torn apart and reconstructed. Right. Would that be right. fair? 
And then, very fair or synthesized chemicals. I mean, things mm-hmm, that were mm-hmm. never meant to be consumed. We can look back in, in human history and see that really our, our road to being unwell kind of started in about the 1930s, which is when processed foods came on to the landscape. Again, until that time, there wasn't such a thing as moon pies. There mm-hmm. wasn't such a thing as some of those foods, Crisco. Um, some of the chemical non-foods that have arrived on the scene, and as our intake of those has risen, and our intake of whole foods has decreased, that could be some of what has invited much of the diseases of our day, what we call the diseases of affluence, um, from heart disease to cancer to diabetes to overweight, because that is indeed one of those diseases of affluence. So, so when we talk about the good foods, the healthy foods, the wise foods, those that aren't so wise taste good. They're addicting. We're, we're drawn to the salt. We're drawn to the butter. Many restaurants, you, you work with restaurants, but you know the right. secrets. Some of them like including that because they know that it, it attracts us. One right. of the tips, Pam, I'm almost certain you taught us this, but you told Barb and I to find a healthy cookbook. You suggested several. I right. think we ended up picking the I don't know if it's the ADA or the American Heart Association cookbook. Mm -hmm. And you said, well, just start cooking through those recipes. You may only find one in 10 that you like, but you'll find one you like. And Mm -hmm. then in the next 10, you'll find another one. And we began the process because I think you said the average family eats about 10 different meals across the month. Is that right? And we began that process. The very first thing that, that we cooked was a lasagna. It was a vegetarian lasagna, but it was with a soy sprinkle that you recommended that we mm-hmm. still use. We've never had anyone that doesn't think it isn't elk or bison or meat, but it's it's veg- vegetable. And we love that lasagna. And so is is that still a valid concept to to be able to replace those meals that aren't wise with the meals that are wise for you and your family? Am I on target with that still? 100% on target and on target with the notion of eating meals. Because one of the things that I also get people started with, once we break that mindset that food is not the enemy, there are wise choices and unwise choices, the next one is recognizing how critical it is to fuel your body throughout the day. Um, And this is particularly critical right now when intermittent fasting has become such a popular topic. And and for many people, the way that they diet, it certainly does restrict calories, but it doesn't energize their body for the demand they're putting on their body. So trying to get families, individuals, into a routine of eating that starts when their day starts and ends when their day ends. But again, wise chosen meals, what I call power meals and power snacks throughout the day to fuel the body, to nourish the body, to energize the body and to keep the blood chemistry so stable that you keep that sweet tooth at bay. Some of the reason people fall head first into those foods that taste so good is because their body is so deficient Hmm. that they end up having every cell in their body saying, feed me, I need something (laughs) to bring these blood sugars up. And it's never broccoli or cauliflower, thank you very much. (laughs) What they're looking for is M&Ms, Reese's peanut butter cups, anything that can get in there and get their body up quicker. But what goes up quickly falls and that cycle just continues and continues. So meals evenly proportioned through the day, it's it's a completely different mindset. It's it's as you said, it's it's almost resetting mm. um, the clock and being able to reset the mind and the body and to be able to think, okay, my goal is not to avoid food, my goal is to eat food right foods, right time, right balance. It's the eat right prescription. 
Love it. Two terms I'd like you to define quickly. Intermittent <laughs> fasting is defined a bunch of different ways by different people. How do you use that term? How do you recommend it? So intermittent fasting, again, as I mentioned, has become quite popularized. It was used in certain chronic disease um, conditions to try to limit um, the caloric intake in a day. Um, most of the success with intermittent fasting has been seen different than what the typical person will do. It's, it's the 5-2 way of intermittent fasting where someone eats hopefully wisely and well five days of the week and two days of the week they limit their caloric intake not so different than we see through scripture where people would again go into a time of retreat a time of prayer a time of medicine and in the process of that they would end up um being able to have a time where their body wasn't so focused on food but focused on right kinds mm -hmm. of fuel coming in. Um, the one that's become more popularized, though, is where you limit your intake of food to seven to eight hours a day. Now, wouldn't be a bad thing if people started that in the morning when they arise and ended it around 3.34 in the afternoon and then got to bed early. But because people's days start early, Dr. Wald, and their days in late, they end up pushing off eating, which is starving their body, and ending up falling headfirst into a lot of food at the very time of day their body isn't burning or processing so well. Mm -hmm. They tend to eat most of their intake within 12 to 12 noon to 7 or 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. to 8. Again, it's, it's intermittent fasting and it will work because they're limiting calories. But what they're doing is they're starving their body of needed proteins and fibers and the very fuel that feeds that microbiome within by not giving their body the supply to meet the demand. So it's an intriguing concept. Um, it's just being, um, it's being done in unwise ways. Got it. The old admonition, eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a mm -hmm. queen, dinner like a pauper would still fuel early in the day, fuel your kids early in the day, do it wise. You also exactly. mentioned the term power snacks. Explain that. Mm -hmm. So again, back in the day, um, when we, at least you and I, grew up watching Leave it to Beaver, we, we watched an American family that would, you know, get up in the morning at eight o'clock, have a warm breakfast around the breakfast table together at 8.30. The boys went off to school at nine. Walt went off to work in June stayed home and vacuumed in pearls and high heels, right? <laughs> um, then they would have their lunch. They would be together for a dinner at 5 p.m. You could set your clock by it, sometimes with Eddie Haskell or Lumpy there. And then at, at late, they would be in bed by 8 p.m. That is not our life. We are up early. Our day ends late, as I mentioned before. Three square meals worked for the cleavers. It doesn't work for us when we're putting the kind of demand on that we are. So I encourage people to get up and eat early within that first half an hour of arising and then to eat about every two and a half to three hours, a balanced, wisely chosen power snack or power meal, um, never going more than three to four hours without food. So that might mean a breakfast at six was what mine was this morning, um, a mid-morning kind of snack, and then a lunch coming in, an afternoon snack, then a dinner. But again, I'm not talking about reaching for a, a candy bar. What I'm talking about is giving your body the power Power. So that might be um, a, a, what I call a four hour power mixture that I use with the magic or my pro golfers, the athletes I work with. It's a balance of, of nuts, um, peanuts and or soy nuts with with pumpkin seeds or soy or um, sunflower seeds together with some dried fruit to be a perfect balance. Or maybe it's a half of a sandwich or maybe it's some cheese and fruit or maybe some Greek yogurt with fruit. The key is that it's giving giving you that consistency, undergirding your blood sugars, and thereby energizing you, but also powering your body with the right fuel at the right time. So, so Pam, before we go, 
How can people reach you? How can they learn more about your books and some of your food products? And I didn't even ask you about the smart way strategy. How can folks find out more? Well, again, another reason we need to get back together for another show. Um, Easiest way is at my website. It's www.pamsmith.com, pamsmith.com. And yes, there can find out all of the things we've been talking about. I have blogs. I have the smart way. I'm written out right there and, and beautiful spices. So it's a fun place to go and do a little tour. And our Shaquille O'Neal, Autographs available? <laughs> if only, if only. <laughs> he, he sells, if only him, him, he sells him himself, doesn't he? Exactly. Such a good man. Such a good man. Mm. Our time's beginning to run out. I think we need to have another show, Pam, to talk about some specifics. How do you prepare power snacks? How do you prepare lunches for your kids? How do you prepare those meals? How do you do it? Would you be willing to come back? Because we could dig into this just a a little bit. Just a little bit more and do what you and Barb started doing right at the get-go. How do you start to prepare meals that not only satisfy, but nourish you and your family? Uh, Now, um, Final word. Some of some people may be joining us a little bit late. We've been talking about diet and dieting. What's your final sermonette on diet sermonette. and dieting? Here we are. Here we are in the new year. People are making resolutions. Um, really commit to focusing on what to feed the body rather than what to avoid. What are the foods that are going to really give your body the right stuff, the stuff that's going to be able to get your metabolism working so you can burn fat while you're building muscle and in the process, building your immunities, in the process, getting your brain functioning, in the process, lifting up a shield against Mm -hmm. all of those enemy attacks. It's all about eating in a way, eating well to live well. Can't wait to have you back. Pam, I love you. Thank you for being with us. Look forward to our next visit. Can't wait. And thanks to all of you for joining us for this episode of Ask Dr. Walt. Gosh, it went quick. Hey, I'd love for you to drop by my website and sign up for my free daily email. It's drwalt.com. That's D-R-W-A-L-T.com. And until our next visit, let's get moving together toward true health, physically, emotionally, relationally, and spiritually. And dear friends, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. See you next time.